the next section we're looking at is the big section of John 4, verse 1 to 45, where we see Jesus meeting the Samaritan woman. It's a really well-known story, and I encourage you just to take some time and read through it before we dig into it together. Um, if you're new to this channel, then please do subscribe and like the video and share it with others. What I called this section was Jesus, the Savior of the world, which we see in verse 42. A couple of exegetical tools that I used in digging into this passage was the character tool, which we'll look at in a moment, and then also the narrative plot arc tool, where we see our setting, conflict, we see the climax of the story, the resolution, and the new setting. So the setting was given to us in chapter 4, verse 1 to 6, uh, where we see Jesus in Samaritan territory and then the conflict builds uh, from verse 7 to 25 as Jesus and this Samaritan woman have a conversation where Jesus deals with some key areas of understanding for her and then the climax I saw in 4 verse 26 where Jesus answers her question or answers her statement about who the Christ coming and he says, I am he. So Jesus states that he is the promised Messiah. And then the resolution 4 verse 27 to 42, um, we see the woman called others to come and meet Jesus. Uh, while in the midst of this, the magnitude of what's happening seems to be missed by the disciples, by Jesus' disciples. But many Samaritans believe in Jesus and state that he is indeed the saviour of the world. And then the new setting is given in 4 verse 43 to 44. So transition, transitioning us into the next section as Jesus goes to Galilee, where we'll see he meets uh, and heals a, um, an official's son. In the wider context, what we see um, from chapter 3, We've seen that great statement in John 3, verse 16 and 17, and particularly looking at verse 17, where we're told that Jesus came not to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. We've seen that playing out in chapter 3 with Nicodemus, and now in this section it transitions from Jews to Samaritans, and in the next section we'll see that transitioning to Gentiles, the Roman centurion's son being healed. So just growing the scope of what it means for Jesus to be the savior of the world. And then using the character tool, um, going through, obviously we see Jesus is uh, the key character, the key player in this story. Then the other key character in this story is the Samaritan woman. Something we've been tracking throughout John's Gospel is looking at this evidence which calls for belief, which leads to life. And here the evidence grows where we see the testimony um, of the woman. The woman's testimony that he told me everything I ever did. Uh, she speaks of his words. Because of his words, many more became believers. And now they said, we have heard for ourselves. So further testimony. They had seen. Uh, she says, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? Um, and that idea of Messiah is just worth highlighting there. So John is growing evidence about Jesus, evidence which calls for belief. And here we see many of the Samaritans believed. He says we no longer believe just because you told us, but now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the savior of the world. This evidence which calls for belief 
um, in John's Gospel leads to eternal life. And we see this woman being offered this living water, which Jesus says here in verse 14, that this water will well up to eternal life. So Jesus is offering this woman um, living water. Now that is worth just looking at a cross-reference in um, John 7, 38 to 39. Jesus clarifies, says that this living water refers to the Holy Spirit dwelling in a believer. So Jesus was offering her uh, the spiritual life that comes to those who believe that he is indeed the Messiah, the promised one, the savior of the world. And this story is growing our view to show that this salvation is being offered to even Samaritans. Now, Samaritans were uh, enemies of the Jews. They were looked at as half-breeds. Um, you can go and dig into more in any uh, commentary or study Bible. will give you a bit more of the context uh, of where the Samaritans came from. But what John is doing here is showing the surprising nature of this um, salvation that Jesus offers. And he's growing the evidence about Jesus. And some of the things that we see about Jesus here are things that we haven't yet seen in John's Gospel, where he speaks about himself offering this living water. In Jeremiah 2, verse 13, uh, Jeremiah had prophesied that the people had turned from the spring of living water. They turned away from God himself and were trying to dig uh, cracked systems that couldn't hold water. And this woman is typical of that. Uh, she's been trying to quench a deep thirst inside her um, in many ways, including her own promiscuity, which we see here, that she had uh, five husbands and the man she now had wasn't her husband. Um, so she was trying to find ways to fill the void inside. And Jesus came to her and said, actually, I am the only one who can give you this living water. As the Spirit does the work of transformation in a person's life, and they do indeed give eternal life to a believer. And that is what Jesus offers to this woman in this section. There's also a whole discussion between this woman and Jesus about the nature of worship and Jesus is also reframing um, the whole idea of worship for her um, and the whole idea of worship for us. Um, it's important for us to, to see what he says about true worship. We saw in chapter 2 that Jesus had cleared the temple um, saying that something new and better was coming, a new way of approaching God and Jesus is expanding on that here. He's saying that Worship is now going to be in the spirit and in truth. And this is linked because the living water, the Holy Spirit uh, will be in them. Um, these new believers, those who believe in Jesus, will be able to worship him in spirit and in truth. Which means that they can worship him anywhere, uh, at any time, through the spirit. And in truth, it's all the truth about Jesus, uh, the source of, of our worship. Then another character worth digging into is just looking at uh, Jesus' disciple. And we see his disciples completely seem to miss the point in this story. Um, they've gone into town and then as they arrive back and see Jesus with this woman, they're surprised. And the, the funny transition here, the woman runs back, calls the people from her town, they come out, and the disciples seem to miss the magnitude of what's happening here. They want Jesus to eat. A revival is breaking out on the road in front of them or in the fields around them, and they are concerned about food. Uh, and so Jesus reframes their whole understanding, and he tells them to look at the fields. Open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Now, this would have been amazing for them to open their eyes and look at the fields around them and see Samaritans coming out of town toward Jesus. The salvation was even for them because Jesus is the Savior, not just of the Jews, but of the whole world. 
So the disciples seem to be missing the magnitude of what's happening. But this woman has been transformed by Jesus. She runs into town and says, come and see this man who told me everything I ever did. That's a terrifying thought for somebody to meet you and to know everything about you. But Jesus is that one. Um, Jesus is the God who is described in Psalm 139 who searches and knows her. And instead of terrifying her, this thrills her. And she wants others to come. And they came out of town straight away, which means they must have saw in this woman who is normally despised, uh, somebody who she's going to the well at noon, which shows that people didn't want to be associated with her. She's going out of the normal time of going to get water. Um, because of her lifestyle, people have shunned her and shut her off. But now, at her word, they come out of town toward Jesus. They must have saw in her that a great transformation had taken place. And a dr great transformation had taken place because she had met the Messiah, the Savior of the world. And as they come to Jesus, at the woman's testimony they came, and we told that they believe. But then verse 42 the key verse says, We no longer believe just because of what you said. We now have heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. And this section really should encourage us as we dig into it. We see that this salvation that Jesus came to win for us. In love, God had sent the Son that whoever believes in him may not perish but have life. That whoever believes includes even women like this sinful Samaritan woman. It includes even people like these Samaritans. This is the first recorded revival as many Samaritans believe in Jesus. And in the next section we're going to see a Roman centurion's son uh, being healed as the salvation goes to him. Jesus is indeed the savior of the world. This should thrill our hearts and we too should open our eyes and look to the fields and see that the harvest is ripe. Jesus is still the same Savior of the world even today. And let's rejoice as we dig into this truth and may it stir our hearts to look at the world and not to shun um, sinners in the world around us like this Samaritan woman was shunned, but rather to see uh, sinners in desperate need of a Savior and to love them enough to say, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? Well, yes, he is. He is the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Let's worship him in spirit and in truth. Well, God bless as you dig in further.